Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll be reviewing bone tissue histology with a focus now on the microscopic structure of bone tissue. The two major types of bone tissues are compact bone and spongy bone. We'll be exploring their structures and functions in this podcast. We'll examine the different types of specialized bone cells and the composition of bone's extracellular matrix. Bone tissue is a type of connective tissue, and like all connective tissues, it contains extracellular matrix, which is a substance that surrounds and separates the various cells that make up the bone tissue. The composition of the matrix is 15% water, 30% collagen protein fibers, and 55% crystallized mineral salts, such as calcium phosphate. It often combines with calcium hydroxide, another salt, to form another crystalline substance called hydroxyapatite. As these salts form, they combine with other mineral salts, including calcium carbonate, as well as potassium and magnesium ions. The collagen fibers seen here in this micrograph as these long strand-like filaments form sort of an internal architecture of the extracellular matrix, similar to the framework of a house. And they, as well as the spaces in between the fibers, serve as the deposition sites for all of these various mineral salts. These salts build up in a process analogous to how ice forms on branches or electrical lines. As the salts form over the collagen fibers, the matrix hardens in a process called calcification, also known as mineralization an important early step in the bone building process. The collagen fibers also give the bone its flexibility, providing tensile strength, allowing the bone to bend a little and resist external forces before it stretches too much and breaks. This is similar to how a pencil will bend before too much force and pressure applied to it causes it to snap. There are four main types of cells found in bone tissue, osteogenic cells, osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. Osteogenic cells, also called osteoprogenitor cells, are connective tissue stem cells that are undifferentiated, which means they're unspecialized. They are produced from mesenchyme tissue, which is the source of most of the body's connective tissues. They're located primarily in the endosteum and the inner layer of the periosteum. They're unique in that they're able to divide, while all of these other cells of the bone tissue cannot. The cells produced from osteogenic cell divisions through mitosis develop into another type of cell found in bone called the osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are non-dividing cells that build up the bone. The common suffix blast means to bud or to grow. They secrete the collagen fibers, help develop the matrix, and start the calcification process. Similar to painting oneself into a corner, the osteoblasts surround themselves with the matrix that they produce and become trapped. They are now referred to as the osteocytes. The osteocytes are non-dividing mature bone cells that are metabolically active and provide most of the needs of bone tissue, including nutrient and waste exchange, and help maintain the overall tissue. The osteocytes have a unique shape with these long slender branch processes that extend through microscopic canals in the compact bone tissue. These long processes enable the osteocytes to better communicate 
with other osteocytes as well as in their exchange functions with nearby blood vessels. The osteoclasts are the largest of the bone cells and are found mostly in the endosteum. They originate as products of the fusion of large numbers of a type of white blood cell called a monocyte. They have a unique shape with the side of the cell membrane that faces the bone surface folded into a ruffled border. This large collection of membrane surface area functions in secreting strong enzymes and acids and gives the osteoclasts a function opposite the osteoblasts in that they break down the collagen and salts of the matrix rather than build them up. This process is called bone resorption. You can remember their function by the phrase osteoclasts carve out bone. Bone takes a lot of abuse and is under constant stress and strain, so the osteoclasts resorption helps in the overall bone homeostasis, including maintenance, growth, and repair. Even though bone is very strong, it contains lots of microscopic spaces between its cells. These spaces allow passage of blood vessels and also store red bone marrow. Bone tissue is classified as either compact or spongy bone based on the size and distribution of these spaces. Most of the skeletal system is made of compact bone, about 80%, while the other 20% is spongy bone. Compact or dense bone tissue is the solid, hard, strong, external bone tissue that contains few spaces. It is the weight-bearing tissue of bone, helping to protect and support bone. Located under the periosteum, it forms most of the diaphysis or shaft of the long bone. Compact bone is built from repeating units of bone tissue called osteons, or Haversham systems. Their arrangement resembles the growth rings of a tree seen in cross-section. Each osteon consists of a central canal, also called a Haversham canal, containing blood vessels and nerves which is surrounded by rings of concentric lamellae composed of extracellular matrix. There are also perforating canals, or Folkman's canals, that transport blood vessels and nerves from the outer periosteum into the medullary cavity and central canals. Between the lamellae are little spaces called lacunae, which are where the osteocytes are located. From the lacunae are many microscopic canals filled with extracellular fluid called canaliculi. These are used as channels of communication between adjacent osteocytes and connect the lacunae to each other and also to the central canals to form a complex canal system which allows nutrient and waste exchange as well as exchange of respiratory gases. In between the osteons are interstitial lamellae which are the remains of older osteons. Surrounding the diaphysis are circumferential lamellae which are connected to the external periosteum by perforating or Sharpies fibers. The arrangement of the osteons helps provide the strength and durability of compact bone. They're running in the same direction and are parallel with the diaphysis shaft, which helps resist bending or breaking. The other type of bone tissue is spongy bone tissue, also called cancellous or trabecular bone tissue. Unlike compact bone, it doesn't have any osteons and is usually found in the interior of a bone surrounded by layers of compact bone. 
spongy bone is built out of irregular bony struts that look like thin columns of concentric lamellae called trabeculae. Although the trabeculae appear random, they're arranged along lines of stress that give the bone extra resistance against breaking. In between the trabeculae are large spaces containing a rich supply of blood vessels that feed the osteocytes, and depending on the type of bone, red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. The trabeculae help protect and support the marrow. These spaces also help reduce the weight of the bone, permitting more efficient movement. Spongy bone tissue is abundant in the interior of irregularly shaped bones like the skull bones, pelvis, and sternum. It's concentrated in the center of the epiphyses of the long bones under a thin protective layer of compact bone. We know that bone is highly vascularized and is filled with blood vessels, especially in the red bone marrow. Small arteries called periosteal arteries enter the diaphysis through perforating or Folkman's canals. They're responsible for nourishing the periosteum and the outer layers of compact bone. A large nutrient artery moves through an opening in the diaphysis called the nutrient foramen and enters into the medullary cavity. There it splits into proximal and distal branches that nourish the inner layers of compact bone in the diaphysis, as well as the spongy bone and red bone marrow close to the epiphyses. The metaphysial and epiphyseal arteries move into their corresponding regions of the long bone and supply the red bone marrow and other bone tissues within these regions. There are also corresponding veins that drain the blood away from the long bone and are named after the regions in which they are located. Here we see the epiphyseal vein, the metaphyseal vein, the periosteal vein, and the nutrient vein. 